Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. Also make sure you turn off your hot and cold water supplies. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Maytag washer bellow seal clamp ring. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at appliancepartspros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new bellow seal clamp ring. The bellow seal clamp ring is what holds the bellow seal to the front of the tub. The main reason to be changing it out is if it's damaged and the seal is coming off. In order to get to the part, we have to take apart the washer. First thing we're going to do is remove the top panel. We're going to use our Torque 20 screwdriver to take out the screws. Now that you have all the screws out, you can pull the top panel back just a little bit until it hits the stop. Then you can lift it off and set it aside. With the top off the washer, we can remove the control panel. First thing we're going to do is remove the soap drawer. All you have to do is pull it out and press on the release lever and pull it out the rest of the way so you can set it aside. Now that we have the soap drawer out, we can remove the two screws that hold the console on so we can pull it off the machine. With the screws that hold the console to the soap dispenser out, we can open up the washer door so it's out of the way of the console. There's four locking tabs we have to release to pull the console off. Three of them are on the top. All you have to do is lift up and pull out on the plastic console. Another one in the middle. And one more on the end. Once you have these three released, you can swing the console out a little bit and then we're going to take a putty knife and reach in here and release the last one. Once you have them all released, you can swing the console up and set it on top of the washer. We're going to use our Torque 20 driver to remove the screws that hold in the access panel. Now that we have all the screws out, we can pull the access panel out. All you have to do is pull the bottom out a little bit and let it drop down. Once you have it out, you can set it aside. With the access panel out of the way, we can start removing the front panel. First thing we're going to do is take our Torque 20 driver, take out the screws that hold the door switch in. Next we can take off the spring clamp that holds the seal onto the front panel. Spring is located down at 6 o'clock. You want to get underneath it with a small flathead screwdriver and carefully lift it out. Once you have it out like this, we're just going to pull counterclockwise and take it out. Then we can take the door boot and pull it off the front panel and push it inside the washer. When you get up to this point right here, this is where the tube from the soap dispenser comes down. So you have to peel it back. There's no clamp or anything that holds it on, but you have to take it off this tube. Now that we have the door boot off, we can close the door and we're going to use our Torque 20 driver to remove the screws that hold the front panel on. Now that you have all the screws up, you can open up the door and use it to help lift the front panel off. Just tilt the bottom forward a little bit and drop it down. Then you can pull it out and set it aside. With the front panel out of the way, we're going to remove the door switch off this bracket. All you have to do is lift it up and swing it out of the way. And that will give us access to the clamp right here. You want to make sure that you remember about how long this extra piece is so that you can tighten the new clamp up to about the same tightness. To remove the clamp, you may have to pull out on a little bit so we can get in here with a Phillips screwdriver. And all you have to do is loosen it up so we can take it off. Once you have the clamp loose, you can pull it off the washer. If 
Here's the old bellows seal clamp ring next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To put the new bellows seal clamp ring on, you want to line it up so the screwing head is about in the same spot as it was before. And just go around and put it on. Once you have the clamp ring in place, we can use our Phillips screwdriver and tighten it down. Once you have the clamp tightened down, you want to give the bellow seal a few tugs to make sure it's not going to come off. Just go around and grab the seal and make sure it's not going to come off. If it uh, comes off now, it's definitely going to come off when you're doing some laundry and it's shaking around. Once you're sure the clamp is tight enough and the bellow seal isn't going to come off, you can put the washer back together. We can put the lid switch back in place. Remember all you have to do is line it up and set it onto these two little pegs. Now that we have the door switcher back in place, we can put the soap dispenser tube back into the seal. Remember there's no clamp or anything. All you have to do is feed it through and push it up into place right here. Once you have that in, we can put the front panel back on. The front panel goes on the same way we took it off. We're going to line up the top so we can put the tabs underneath the, the silver panel and then lower it down on the bottom so it's held in place so we can put the screws in. We're going to use our Torque 20 driver to put those back in. Now that we have the front panel installed, we can open up the door so we can put the lid switch in the front of the bellow on. To put the lid switch in, we're going to reach inside and line it up. Once you have it in place, we can hold it while we use our Torque 20 driver again to put the screws in. To put the front of the bellow seal on, we want to make sure that this rib right here is what goes in the groove right here. We're going to go around the whole door and put that in and then we can put the clamp on. To put the clamp on, we're going to put the clamp down at 6 o'clock and we're going to go clockwise around it. So we're going to put the clamp at 6 and then go up all the way around to 9 and 12. When you get over here, it's going to get kind of hard to put on. This is where we're going to grab our locking pliers and clamp it on. And you want to make sure when you pull on this that you pull towards the side of the machine. If you pull out at all, it's just going to come off. So we'll pull over to the side and stretch it out so we can put the clamp on. Once you have it on all the way, you can slowly release the locking pliers and make sure it's in place. Once you're sure it's on, you can close the door. We can put the front access panel back on. All you have to do is line it up, push the top up, and then push the bottom in. We're going to put in the middle screw first to hold the panel in place while we put in the other two screws. To put the console back on, we're going to open the door again so it's out of the way. Then we can put the console in. We're going to line up the tab on the end and push it in. And then you can rotate it in, lining up all these tabs here and if it binds up you may have to wiggle it a little bit but once you get it in you should be able to just snap it shut. Now that we have the console back in place we can put the two screws in the soap dispenser. With all the screws in the control panel 
we can put the soap drawer back in. All you have to do is line it up on its rails and push it back into place. Then we can put the top panel back on. All you have to do is set it into place, just like when we took it off. And you can push it forward, so these four tabs go into the top. With the panel back in place, we can use our Torque 20 driver to put the screws back in. Now that we have the machine put back together, you can plug it in, turn the water back on, and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair, brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.